Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going over how I'm training for big winter waves on the north shore of Oahu. A few friends of mine are big wave surfers, so we start with the rock walk. So what you do underwater, you hold your breath, you build up your CO2 tolerance, and then you take breathe ups at the surface. This is my friend Kaya coming in for her rock walk. And you try to start with a couple steps and you just kind of build your tolerance up. And then breathe ups are like, Basically you breathe in and then you breathe out slower and you take a little pause between that and you do that for a couple minutes and then you do your rock walk. You can do your rock walk after just like breathing normal but your breath hold isn't going to be as long. The idea is to slow down your heart rate and get that sort of rock walk where you can comfortably build up your CO2 tolerance. I must note that you do need to train with another person or with someone who's experienced in this sort of stuff. You don't want to be blacking out because there's a thing called a shallow water blackout which I'll get to in a little bit. But here's us going about our training. We bring a GoPro just to kind of show what we're doing in training so we can document the process because we're doing this a couple times a week to get us primed and ready for winter. Winter waves are no joke on the North Shore. They get quite big and look at all these fish that we got to see. It was so cool. There's been a ton of fishermen there but also some really cool fish to go and walk through. That was fun. How do you feel? I feel pretty good. Pretty stoked on it. We didn't use our pink dumbbells. They're okay. too light in the water. <laughs> um, but we found some cool little rocks over here. One of them was a pretty big one. And we did some runs up and down. And then we did the rock walk. And we had a good time. What kind of fish did we see? Ooh. No, we didn't see. No. What did we see? Papio. Papio. <laughs> the baby Ula. We saw the baby Ula. And what was the little goat fish one? Goat fish. <laughs> oh, I'm a llama. That was a perfect vlog. Mm -hmm. And we got the fins, swim caps, pink weights, GoPro mount. <laughs> what more could you ask for? Beautiful day. Kaya's gonna help me carry the dumbbells back to the car, get her a little extra workout in. How heavy are those dumbbells? Five pounds. <laughs> five pounds. <laughs> Cute and five pound pink. There we go, matches your suit and your swim cap. Let's go. So for this video, I've also included footage from our next day of training. We did swim training throughout the bay and then we did running up and down that little hill there you can see. It's actually a burner when you come all the way back up. And then you want to practice your different strokes. You start out with the one you're most confident in, and then freestyle is always really good because it works your shoulders, works your arms, and I feel like it's pretty efficient as well. And then we brought a surfboard. This is for in case someone blacks out while they're doing their holds, and it's also good for paddle training. So sometimes we'll paddle the entire bay, and then we go back to rock walks. We kind of do a variety of different things. And the shallow water blackout, it's interesting because what happens is you build up such a CO2 tolerance that your body's reaction is to have you pass out because then it opens up your airways. And so you don't want that to happen. So it's always good to have some sort of safety along the way. In our case, we're all registered lifeguards and we are knowledgeable about this stuff enough to do it. And then Kaya is a big wave surfer. We have lifeguards nearby if we need them as well, and we know how to rescue, and then we also bring the foamy board just in case to be able to prop someone up if they were to pass out. Kaya, tell me about how training's going for you. You just held a really long breath hold with the rock run. <laughs> Pretty major. <laughs> yeah, but it's really nice today. Everybody's doing awesome. Awesome. And Becky is being really good at like coaching us and pushing us on our boundaries. Tell us what you've had us do so far. So we sprinted up the hill and then we sprinted back down the hill holding our breath and then swam as far as we could holding our breath. And now we're doing underwater rock running, counting our steps and we are trying to push our steps a little bit further each time. And what did we do before we did all that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like that's all we did, but we actually did more. And then all we and then and then we also did a run, run, swim, run. So we all alternated doing running, paddling, and swimming up and down the hill and out to the tower, and then looping back around 
and did that for a good 15 minutes. Nice, nice little circuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Nicole, so what was your favorite part of training today? Ooh, I really like pushing ourselves, especially on our max hold, because mm -hmm. when Becky had us do that new drill where it's like, hold it up and then hold it down and run in like with your breath held by the time i do like two strokes i'm out of breath and i'm like a whale coming up for air so, no. so i really enjoy it because i know that i need to work on it and i'm pushing myself to be better good job good job if you can tell one of our favorite parts of training is walking with the rocks underwater. It's just so blissful and beautiful underwater and the water's so blue. Sometimes you see turtles, other wildlife. The other day we saw a seal at a distance, of course. And it's a fun way to challenge yourself and build up that CO2 tolerance. Basically, the reason we're doing this and building up our CO2 tolerance, as we call it, is so that we can be prepared to take those wipeouts when those big waves come and hold us under and have the confidence to know that we have our breath hold good enough to where when we're gonna get tossed and held down and in a sticky situation, we can know that we'll last to come up for air. Besides holding your breath, I think the biggest challenge with these rock walks is being able to confidently know that you can hold your breath, where your limit is. And then the thing that holds a lot of people back initially is when you're diving under, getting down to the bottom initially, you have to basically let out some air. So typically I'll swallow the air that's in my throat and then I'll pinch my nose and let a little bit of air out. And what that's doing is it's allowing me to equalize. And it's something that if you free dive or you do something in and around the water where you're going under and up to the surface a lot, you get used to. But it's something that's really important because you don't want to pop your ears or have anything bad with that. What are your goals for this training? Four minute breath hold. Okay, and then? And surf the biggest wave of my life. <laughs> yeah, winter's coming. Okay, Becky. Um, longer breath holds and um, smoother, longer, smoother turns on the board. Nice. Better wipeouts? Yeah, better wipeouts. More confident with it? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Nicole, what are your goals? My lovely goals. Okay, so I used to compete for like five years and I want to get back to where I was when I was competing because like it's honestly like intimidating out here sometimes and there's also a bunch of uncles out there and people who are like paddling around you and paddling faster so I want to get my paddle speed up I want to get my breath hold up so I can take more pounding for more waves and um yeah so that I can paddle circles around others so I can actually catch some waves this winter and do better so. and get my turns like those old men turns where they're like super good and they have like <laughs> nice spray that's like a life goal get up with those 65 year olds there you go <laughs> <laughs> Good job. It's on the record now. Hey buddy.